Okay, in this video, we're going to take it a, a little different way. This is about the beginning of the universe, how everything started. In the beginning, now this is something that can be read in the uh, Apocrypha of John. It's the words of Jesus Christ. And you know about the Apocrypha in the New Testament books. The Apocrypha are mostly the words of Christ that are removed that you are not allowed to hear by the Catholic Church. So that's something that uh, you should really, you know, keep in mind when uh, you hear about that. And I showed you about symbolism and the, the different uh, things that we see. And here is, I'm going to take you to the root of everything now with this video here. Okay, in the beginning, according to the Apocrypha of John Jesus Christ, what he says is that there we were, there was a parallel universe called Pleroma. In the beginning, there was only Pleroma. And uh, Pleroma was the residence of the gods. And there, the gods always existed, and they'll never die. And our universe came about from there. Well, what had happened is the goddess Sophia, Sophia was the first. Well, what was she the first of? Well, she was the first of creating evil. What had happened is Sophia broke the laws of Pleroma and created a child uh, without a male consort. And what it did is it created an unbalance and the unbalance became an evil. And what the child was, was the Yedo Boeth. The Yedo Boeth. And it is a creature that has the head of a lion and the body of a snake. And uh, <clears throat> that was, that is what Amen Ra is, the Yavaboeth. Well, what had happened, Sophia <clears throat> kept Amen Ra as, a, as uh, a servant, as a slave, as an artisan, as it's called, as a, a worker. <clears throat> and one day, <clears throat> Amen Ra broke free. The Yavaboeth broke free from Sophia's power and stole a portion of her power and came into a new universe. What had happened was is the Yadaboeth created an imitation universe. And this is all in the uh, Apocrypha of John. Well, what happened next is the Egyptian stories. You hear about uh, the Egyptian god Seth, Osiris, um, uh, the two brothers, and then they had the uh, sisters, uh, Nephiles, Isis, and uh, uh, Tarata, I forget her third one's name, Tararet, that was, yeah. Well, those three sisters, two of them were married to Seth, and the other one was Isis, which was Osiris's wife. Well, Seth was very jealous. Seth is a jealous God. If you read in the Bible, I am a jealous God, you'll see that uh, repeated in scripture. Well, that's because he is. And uh, Seth was jealous of Osiris. He was jealous of uh, the relationship with Isis. And uh, he created a casket, the first ever casket, and put him to death and then drowned him in the Nile. Osiris died and uh, Isis brought him back to life for a moment and, and created a son called Horus. <clears throat> Horus was fierce for battle and uh, he had great wars with Seth. Horus, as I showed you in um, the image of uh, Hermanibus, that is Horus and he had uh, the penis in his hand. Well, what had happened during one of uh, Seth and Horus's battles is uh, he ripped off uh, Seth's genitalia and uh, Seth cut out the eye of Horus. He then took the eye of Horus and he took it and he impregnated Isis with it. And uh, once uh, Hera found out about it, Hera wanted to, to kill him. She wanted to kill the child. She wanted to kill uh, Isis. And uh, she created an army called the Nephilim. Uh, Nephilim created the Nephilim and went after him. And uh, the son, Anubis, well, he got an army. He asked uh, Zeus for it. This is in Greek mythology. And Arcus asked Zeus for an army. And Arcus is uh, another name for Anubis, which is another name for Satan. 
Well, I asked him for an army and he gave him an army of ants called the Anunnaki. And then there was fierce battles between the Nephilim and the Anunnaki. They wanted to kill that child. And Anunnaki was the one that fought for him. Okay, and um, this is the war that was going on during the time. Well, what had happened is shown in this image here. Got a couple ahead of myself. All right, this image is from an Egyptian wall. And it says, Toth as a baboon entices Sekhmet the lioness back to her home in Halopolis. Well, first, where is Halopolis? Well, I told you, God split the light from the darkness. When God split the light from the darkness, there was a perfect light, perfect light, and then he created a third realm. That third realm was hell. That's where they would battle it out. That's where the battles would be fought, is in hell. Okay, well, Toth, another name for Toth, is Horus, as I explained before. Now, the baboon entices Sekhmet. Notice Sekhmet has all the, she's, it's definitely a female there, because you see all the, you know, the glands for the, the children. Uh, and um, if you know about Hera, Hera is Juno. If you know what Juno is, is Juno has children off by herself, and that's what Hera did. Hera would create her own children, uh, just like Sophia did. The same thing, create their own, own children without a male consort. Okay, so what happens here, Sekhmet is known in the Egyptian uh, mythology as the um, goddess of war. Goddess of war is Athena. And Athena, as I showed in older videos, Athena is attached to Hera. It's a sister. They're like sisters that, they're the same beings. And when you hear the different names throughout the mythologies, they're the same beings. However, they're altered all slightly, like Legos. They go together just a little bit differently. So what happens is he calls this lioness back to hell. And notice on top, as I showed you before, see that ball? That means under the control of God the Father. You also see a winged creature over here. Well, I'm going to go down. I'm going to show you a little bit more. Now, this is Sumerian artwork. Sumerian artwork shows the beginning of our universe. You see the hunters here. And I'm going to take you up to who this guy is up here. I believe so, yeah. Well, this here, this image here, that is of Seth. That's who Seth is. That's the father. Okay. Go down a little bit. Okay, this is a Syrian artwork, and this is a modern-day church. Okay, you see they got their marks everywhere, but going back down. All right, now you see that they're going after. What are they attacking? Well, they're attacking a lion. What happened? You can read this in Mayan mythology. Um, it, it's uh, obviously in Sumerian mythology here and um, the mythologies around the world. Well, what had happened in Mayan mythology, they called it a jaguar that went into the light. Or it went into the darkness in the beginning, but then it ends up ultimately in light. So what happened was, is this lion was enticed by a lioness to go into the new created universe, the parallel universe from Pleroma. The lion was from Pleroma, got called in by the lioness and went into the darkness, went into the darkness and loved the lioness, loved the lioness for a long time. And then one day the lioness was gone and uh, the lion went looking for the lioness and he found a winged serpent and the winged serpent led him to the light and inside the light what was waiting for the lion was this the attack they get the lion they attack the lion kill the lion there's the lion laying dead this is all Sumerian artwork notice this Abman Ra always absorbs his opponents it's a, read about it. Read about Amin Ra. He absorbs his opponents. And then you see, you got that Sumerian Sphinx. You got that head on top. Okay, that's where it comes from. That's where the Sphinx in Egypt comes from. And it goes around the world. The same story is told over and over. So, what had happened is a god from Paroma, a lion god, came over into the darkness and was uh, in love with the lioness 
and the lioness left him one day, it was just called and gone. And then uh, he was looking all over for her frantically and he found a winged serpent and a winged serpent did not appear that he could harm him in any way. So he believed that winged serpent and he went into the light. When he went into the light, it was the surprise that was waiting for him. And it's all shown in Sumerian artwork. You can look it up for yourselves and see what happened. That is the origin of the Sphinx. The Sphinx is the origin of mankind. As notice, originally, if you know about the Sphinx, it didn't have a face of a man. That face was put there later. It was originally a face of a lion. And that face got redone as it became the face of mankind. The Sphinx is mankind, it was broken down perfect guy from Pleroma that came over and there you see with the arrows through it there you see this is Sumerian artwork there's the male lion there's the female lion both laying dead came in and killed him and that's what he came in to see he went in to fight you know to save the one he loved but ended up getting killed and ended up becoming mankind what had happened is after now that's, uh, you see that's Hermes, if you're looking you know, at the wings, the body of the lion, and uh, there's the female Sphinx. They always say that there's a second Sphinx, and yes, there is a second Sphinx, and that's what it was. It was Hera. She was the one that uh, deceived the lion, came the hunter, got him, Seth, God the father. Okay, or Zeus that you'd be looking at, hunted the lion, captured him and now to enslave them for all of eternity. And that's what it's all about. See, then this is more Sumerian artwork that you're seeing. The slavery, that's how they got beaten. The two faces of men look identical, but there's two different species of mankind. And uh, that's how the universe began. Everything else that you've been taught is just pure deception. After this is what you'd be looking at uh, when you'd see in the book of Tobit. Uh, at those events, or even the beginning of the book, in the beginning of uh, the, the whole thing where Adam comes in, he's the first one, and, and um, he's very powerful at first, and they have to overtake him. But they overtake him through deception, not through fights and battles. It's always deception. That's how they defeat us. They deceive us. And it's like, either if you seek the truth, you'll find the truth. If you don't seek the truth, you won't find the truth.